The superintendent is launching a digital campaign to address the topics of data privacy and digital citizenship. This afternoon, we're going to share information with regard to our systemic approach to protecting student data and the professional learning that will support this initiative. Here are three outcomes. Hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to identify laws, policies, and rules that govern student privacy, define directory information, and explain how to select digital content and instructional tools based on the established criteria. Our students live in a very uh, digitally enhanced world where they come into contact with technology in both their learning environments as well as their social environment. Uh, because of their ability to use technology 24-7 in school, we have to be diligent about creating a safe environment for them. Personally identifiable information is vulnerable to exposure, and it can, but it can be protected through skillful leadership. To this afternoon, we're going to focus on one step that we can take as an institution that really address uh, safety. This is directly linked to uh, the Blueprint 2.0, Goal 2, Safety and Security, which states that every school and office will be safe and secure, promoting individual well-being, provide positive, respectful, and caring environments for teaching, learning, and working. We're deliberately engaging in protecting personal information by um, ongoing professional development, updating our policies, the oversight and management of our information technology systems like the BCPS1 Learning Management System and STARS. We're also looking at our agreements with third-party vendors and communicating best practices, which is the focus for today. In protecting student privacy, we start by looking at our teaching and learning practices, looking at how we can teach students about being safe online, as well as the uh, resources that we as teachers use and looking at their terms and agreements. This is going to be linked in and related to the policies and rules that are also being updated that are all based on the laws governing the state and the federal level. FERPA is one of the first laws that protects student privacy. This is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, which requires schools to have written permission from a parent or guardian in order to release any information from the student's education uh, record. The Children's Online Privacy Act uh, places special restrictions on software companies about the information they can collect about students under 13. And then the Children's Internet Protect Protection Act requires districts to put measures in place to filter internet access and other measures to protect students, which we see on a daily basis when students are blocked from certain things that teachers can do. The uh, weight of this responsibility does fall on the local level, which is why Baltimore County is looking at its policies this year. We have to and have the responsibility to create these policies because laws tend to lag behind technology. So as technology is moving at a greater rate, we have to um, be proactive and address these issues before we wait for certain laws to be passed. So. In our attempt to be proactive, we are addressing and updating uh, policy and rules 5230, which was going to um, impact 6202, as well as 5550. 5230 is the policy and rule that affects what student records we collect and what student records can be given out to third parties. Um, 6201 is the accessible use policy, which also comes with an opt-out form that parents can sign if they don't want their students' information to be released. And then there's the disruptive um, behaviors policy, which is basically penalties for not following the acceptable use policy. So again, on the local level, we are addressing this and proposing a change to the policies for the upcoming so to provide clarification, this screen shows a definition of personally identifiable information. Sometimes it's referred to as PII. We cannot give out information that falls under PII to third parties that don't have a data sharing agreement with Baltimore County Public Schools. There are certain companies that do have that, and I'll talk about that a little later on in the next few slides. Okay. So the rule what, uh, is basically being changed, and what you can see in this graphic is that under Rule 5230, what was considered directory information has now shifted. Schools have always been able to publish directory information in, let's say, things like um, yearbooks or in um, anything having to do with sports. 
and that has been acceptable to give to you know, colleges or any outside party. Before address and, and, and date of birth were, were included in, in that information, now it is not. So everything on the right side of this graphic is now what we can consider directory information and it's okay to release as long as parents have not signed out an opt-out form. So we can release first and last names, their participation in an organized sport, weight and height, attendance, degrees, and any awards. How this affects us at the middle school level and on a daily basis in our instruction is that there are certain um, Web 2.0 tools that we may have used in the past. If it requires more than what is considered acceptable in that um, directory information, then we cannot use it. So if you were going to have students sign up for a Google account, we can no longer do that because it requires birth date and gender and in some cases email addresses. But if you use Kahoot, Vocaroo, or Padlet, that would be fine because it only requires the students to put in their name. So this is going to take some um, knowledge on the teacher's level of what types of information these Web 2.0 tools or resources request from the students. So because the policy is changing for um, Rule 52 or 5320, we also have to change the opt-out form. Parents can sign the opt-out form at any point. This should be kept on record. Um, and it should be updated by October 1st, but they can do this at any time during the year. So we want to check STARS, which is also housed in BCPS1 under student information systems, and be sure that certain kids have not, or certain parents have not signed this opt-out form that says do not release my child's directory information, because then that would um, affect what types of websites we can have students using. So um, to kind of clear up exactly what types of websites are acceptable, the county has outlined it in two levels. So level one is anything that's housed in BCPS1. These are considered level one because student information is automatically rostered and shared with a third party from BCPS's student information system, but it's shared in a safe and secure file transfer. So these tools may be used. Classflow, Discovery Education, we have Microsoft Office 365. There are a lot of other instructional tools in BCPS1. And because these companies already have agreements with BCPS1, we can use them and know that the information that's shared by or um, about the student is shared in a safe and secure way. What can also be used or are the digital content tools that are considered level two. These might be housed outside of Baltimore County, but they only collect directory information, which would be the student's first and last name. They don't collect any other information that would make the student identifiable to some source outside of the school, like their email address, their parent's name, um, things like that. What we have to do as teachers is first read the privacy policy in terms of use of any type of website that you're going to have students use, identify the information that the company requires the students um, to give in order to create a student account. So if you are looking at something and it says, okay, the students need to have an email address or the student needs to put in their address or their um, birth date, then that's not something that you want to use you're going to apply that criteria that we just talked about in order to determine what will be acceptable use in your classroom. A great rule of thumb is to look on BCPS 1 first for um, resources that you may want to use. Use the resources that are already built into the learning management system like the turn-ins, test and quiz features, the websites that are there. And then if you're going to use something outside of that like a wiki, it shouldn't be something where a student needs to do more than put their name in. Okay, here are Baltimore County's belief statements, which basically just outline how and why we are creating these policies. I'll give you a minute to read that. These uh, belief statements are continued, focused on the second, third, and fourth on this 
slide which basically focus on um, reading the terms and agreement um, with service providers, understanding what content they are collecting from the student, understanding that anytime we have students use technology it should be for educational purpose, that we're not having them create their own Facebook accounts which would not which is collecting more than just the directory information and we're not having them do it for some social purpose so we wouldn't have them use something like that. All right, everyone who has access to students' personal information should be trained and know how to effectively and ethically use, protect, and secure it, which is why you are listening to this presentation. Because we have a changing conditions constantly, we really want to be proactive, which is why we're making these decisions. So my job is to give you this presentation, but also find out what types of applications you're using that may not be in compliance. Thinking about some classes that might use something like Classroom Dojo, that collects a lot more than students just names. They may have to put their parents' names, they may have to put their email addresses, they may have to put their birth dates, those things, because it's not housed in BCPS1, are no longer acceptable. So go through your Rolodex of tools and figure out if they are requiring more than just a student's name to use. We will continue this compliance training at the beginning of the next school year, and I'll give you any other updates. Hopefully now you understand the laws and rules, FERPA, uh, SIPA, COPA, and also know how to define directory information, which is the student's name, weight, any um, athletic teams they may be a part of, awards they received. That information can be given out as long as they have an opt-out. And then you know how to explain or select digital content, which is basically picking things inside BCPS1 or only selecting tools that just require that directory information. Our ultimate goal is to make sure that we are giving cutting edge technology, but we're also securing our students. If you have any questions about this presentation, please email growingupdigital at bcps.org. This presentation is also saved on the shared drive.